Welcome back. Well, for those of you who were concerned about not having seen the photobomb kitty for a couple of days, here he is. He's actually eating right now. I've given him some cat treats because today is a project video and I have a lot of little tiny bits and pieces and he steals them. He'll just grab a nut or a washer in his little teeth and just run off with it. And I've found the easiest way to manage that is to make sure he knows there are cat treats around here somewhere. And if a good kitty just leaves the hardware alone, he'll get a little snack. Yeah, that's right. So, bribery works. Anyway, I'm sure he's going to go lie down. Do you want to go lie down? All right, no. Project video, too much stuff going on here. So, anyway, we will be right back. Actually, he's not getting off the table. He's just sitting here on the corner of the table, licking his nose, waiting for me to give him more goodies. This cat is spoiled. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, here we are with our lamp parts, and yes, the photobomb kitty is still here. I got to keep a very close eye on him because I have all kinds of little parts like this, and uh, there's no question but that he wants them. So if I take my eyes off them, he's going to snatch something and run away with it. As I mentioned in a previous video, what we are going to do in this project is create a lamp entirely from scratch. Now we have never done this before. We have made lamps, we put things together, but for the most part we've had a little bit of a head start. For example, the, um, the Christmas present lamp. That was Jocelyn's Christmas present to me last year, um, the Christmas before last. It had a head start. It had already been, ah, he's gone. It had already been drilled out. So we didn't have to worry about that. And when um, I put the base on it, I did have to drill the base, but again, didn't have to drill the box. With the lamp I got for Jocelyn the Christmas before, which was a vase that too had been drilled out. Yeah. You see what's going on in our relationship? My lamp got made like a full year ahead of hers. Isn't that shameful? Anyway, the first thing we are going to do, because I like to start from the bottom and work up, just my personal preference, is we are going to take this. This is um, an, it, what they, it's just basically an Asian stand. If you wanted to go on eBay and find one of these, that's what you would look for, Asian stand. And you could put a statue on it, you could put a vase on it, you could put a teacup on it, whatever you want. In this case, it's going to become part of our lamp. The reason why it's important that we have this piece is not just because, and I'll show you, the bottom of the lamp looks very unfinished, but See, ever so much better now. That's only part of it. Part of it is the visual. But part of it is practical. When I drill through this base, I'm going to have a hole coming out here. I'm going to put a rod. Let me find a rod. Here's, here's a rod. won't be this one. It'll be a rod like this. Drop it right through that little hole. It will come out here. Uh, I will tighten off a little nut on the bottom so that it doesn't go anywhere and I will feed the lamp cord through this. But the first thing I'm going to do is feed the lamp cord through one of these holes. So when this is sitting down on a table, the lamp cord is coming out through the hole and going up into the box. If I don't do that, 
and take a look. We will have a cord coming out. How are we going to plug it in? You know, this is going to be completely flush to the table. So we're either going to have the lamp sitting on the cord, strangling it, so to speak. Of course, we all know that's not how electricity works. But it, the lamp will not be lying flat on the table and will be quite likely to get knocked over, broken, etc. And we don't want that. Another alternative to this would be to drill a hole through the side of the vase. You know, like down here at the bottom or something. And we could then run the cord through here. But we would not be able to do a rod going the full length of the lamp. What we would be doing, and we've, we've done this before, we actually did a video specifically on wiring a short nipple lamp. It's, it's a very specific wiring technique. We could do it. In that case, all of the wiring apparatus would be right up here at the top, and the cord would be floating loose wherever it lands in the vase until it goes out through the hole. Now, in some situations, wiring a short nipple lamp is actually a pretty useful and valuable thing to know how to do. And let me give you an example. Let's say you have a mason jar that is full of buttons or something and you want to show off your old buttons. You bring your wiring down on the top, you use your short nipple, and then you drill a hole through the side of your mason jar. Bang, cord goes out through the side. Your mason jar can sit as is on the table. It doesn't need to be propped up on a stand. Mason jars are not ordinarily on stands. We're not used to seeing them like that. So it would look odd to us if it were. So that's a way in which one would use a short nipple lamp. That's not what we are doing today. I did, however, feel I ought to mention it because usually when I say this is why we're doing something, people, because my viewers are clever. You know, I do not have dummy viewers. I have the smart ones. Thank you very much. And they will write in and say, well, what about this? What about that? Because their brains are just so full of ideas on so many other ways you can do it. So I figure we're probably better off just discussing the many ways we can do it and the reason why we're doing it this way. The biggest reason is this vase is really heavy. And for a very large, very heavy lamp, because let's take the, when I'm done with this, this is going to be over two feet tall. Um, a very heavy piece like this, you want that rod to go straight through to the bottom. You want the base bolted right onto the bottom of that lamp. We are going to do things to protect the lamp, protect the cord, protect the connections as we go along. We'll talk about them as we do them. But this is because we've got a very heavy piece. And a bit, when a very heavy piece falls, it, it can just be an absolute disaster when it breaks. People can get badly hurt. You know, a small lamp gets knocked over. Usually, okay, the worst that happens is you lose the lamp. Big lamp like this gets knocked over. The worst thing that happens is a trip to the emergency room. And of course, we don't want that. So first step, drilling through the base. And as I say, the reason this is the first step is I just like to work my way from the bottom up. So I have a drill bit. And this is, let's see what this is. This is a half inch drill bit. I am using these rods so i've already checked my drill bit is going to make a hole that will very comfortably fit these little rods by the way this is how you do it you hold your bit and you hold your rod behind your bit and you don't want to see any of the rod poking out on either side you know or you can do it the other way and then in which case you want to see both edges of that bit showing up behind That's the easiest way to tell whether or not it's big enough. So I have my drill here. And what I am going to do is I'm going to pause the video. 
because you've seen me drill before. You don't need to watch it happen again. It's extremely noisy and just, frankly, not very exciting at all. So I will be back when I have this drilled. Oh, one other thing I should tell you before I get started. I'm going to start drilling in on this, which is the top side. Then when I get about halfway through, I'm going to flip it and I'm going to go back in the bottom. The reason I can do that is they very conveniently have a lovely little hole, which is uh, that hole comes from where they put this I, on some sort of lathe to turn it. And that's where the hole comes from. But the hole is a very nice starting point for me. So I'm going to drill down from this side and in from this side. The reason why is when you drill through a surface, you start drilling through this side, it's very possible that you will knock a few slivers and shards of wood loose when it's coming through the other end, when the drill bit breaks through. Um, it can be very hard to avoid. I know a lot of tricks to avoid that, but none of them are quite as good as just drilling in on the other side. And the reason we want to make sure this side doesn't look icky, even though it's the bottom, is it's the only side we're going to see. The lamp base is going to be just screwed right on. We're going to have the rod. We're going to put nuts on it. It's going to be bolted right down. So once we put this lamp together, you're never going to see this side again. But you will see this side if you pick the lamp up. So I would like us to have a nice hole, not something that's all ragged and icky. So that's why I'm going to do it. But it's just something I thought I'd share with you before I get started, in case you are following along with me. All right, I will see you in a couple of minutes with a drilled hole. Okay, that was really quick. Here's our hole. Here it is on the back side. And let's just take one of these. They are all the same size, by the way. You can see there is plenty of room. One of the reasons I want the hole to be a little roomy, this is a point where we can start discussing this, is this was a handmade piece, hand turned. And it's not exactly round. Let me see. Here we go. From here to here, the interior dimension is about six inches. From here to here, it's about five and three quarters, give or take. Let me see. Yeah, there's it. Can you see that it's more of an oval than a circle? It is. It's only a quarter of an inch, so it's hard to tell. But whenever you deal with handmade Asian pieces, or handmade any pieces, I just find it's rather common in Asian pieces, whenever you deal with these handmade pieces, you find all kinds of imperfections. And I find the best way to deal with the imperfections is you give yourself a little bit of extra leeway, a little room here or there, so that you can just tweak and nudge and get things back into line because no matter how carefully you measure if the piece is off by a quarter of an inch your measurements are not going to come out right and it can be just a, almost impossible to compensate for that because when i look at that when i put this on i have to choose the side of this, I want to go to the front of the vase. Um, we have the little, let me show you like this so you can see. We've got the little cutouts. We've got three feet, one, two, three feet. So we have the little cutouts. And I'm going to have to choose the most attractive way to line it up in the front. But what I do not want is to line it up in the front with the foot over here and part of the cutout over here. It's going to look very off kilter. So that is a decision I'm going to have to make when I'm drilling the lamp. You know, to accommodate this stand, I have to make that decision early. And I have to keep in mind that I'm dealing with uh, 
a very asymmetrical little circle here. So whenever you're dealing with handmade, handcrafted, antique things where measurements were less precise than they might be these days, you got to be prepared to play it by ear a little. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to turn our vase upside down, holding it in my lap, and I'm popping this on top. Now, there's a little bit of give, um, and I need to figure out which way I want to line that up. I think I'm probably going to put a foot in the front sort of center one of the three feet on the front side of the vase and leave the other two to the rear. So before I do that, I've got to determine which is the front side. And I'm doing that, by the way, by taking a look at the pattern on the top. I'm going to get the best pattern with the least amount of wear. Um, I want to get something very nice. I'm not doing that. I'm probably... Oh, well, gee. Kind of obvious. They centered one of the designs. But only one. There are three of these. So one is centered on the front. This is my front. So now I'm going to flip it over. And I know which way I'm doing it. Great. All right. So, I'm setting this on. I'm not going to be too, too picky about lining it up. I just need to make sure that the foot is in the front. Then I have my marking pen, and I'm just going to go in and make my mark. Voila! That big red circle is my mark. So, once again, I'm going to go away, drill into this because, as I say, you've seen me drill ceramics too. It's noisy. It's boring. It's just, just it's like watching paint dry. So, I'm going to do that. I'll come right back and then we'll get started on the rest of this. We've got a hole drilled in the bottom of the vase. I have a little photo bomb kitty sitting here next to me. He's actually being so good right now. Just, yeah, I'm so pleased with you. That's not the last bit of drilling or cutting that I'm going to do. And, and I should say, it is all drilling because when I make the cut I need to make, I'm going to do it with the Dremel. So. I have my vase, I have my lamp base, and I'm going to start assembling. I have the rod that I am putting through. Now, the rod is about twice the length of the base of the lamp. You know, that's the stand and the vase. And... I'm not going to cut it until I actually see how long I want it because when I do lamps like this, I tend not to plan them out too carefully. I have all kinds of little fittings here and I have a couple of little reeded rods and what I'm going to do is start building the lamp up and sort of stop when it looks like what I want it to look like. So it's very much a play-by-ear situation. Now, the downside of that is that I'm going to put this lamp together and take it apart maybe a couple of times. What I'm doing right now is I have a nice large flat washer I'm dropping it on the pipe, but see, my finger is there to keep it from going anywhere. And I'm securing it with a nut on the bottom. 
Now, I'm going to drop this down. Sorry, Tony, nothing's happening. There we go. And now, this is where I'm going to start deciding what I want my lamp to look like. This is a vase cap, and I am going to put this vase cap on my little threaded rod. See where it goes. I like it right there. That's good. And I'm going to start looking at these little guys. Um, oh, I want, I want a nice little washer-like thing. Do I have any? Oh, I do. Right. We'll see. Oh, right here. Well, those are too small. We're going to find some big ones. How about these? Um, yes. We're going to put one of these on. We're going to put this on. And let's go up. Put one of these little guys on top. And then all right. Now that tells me how tall I want this to be. Right there. And I'm going to make a mark. a noisy process. The next thing I'm going to do is take the, uh, the rod out and then I'm going to put a cutting wheel on my Dremel and cut where I made that mark. Okay, so now we're going to twist it around till we see the mark, and the mark was made in red pen. Ah, there it is, right there. So I can take all of this off, and I'll be cutting through right here. That is where this rod, this is the lower part, is going to join with this little decorative rod. And the fixtures are all decorative. These are called couplers. And I will just screw the couplers on. And here's how a coupler works. I've shown you this before, but while we got it here, we might as well. Now I've just screwed the coupler onto that end of the rod. And I'm going to screw this little piece in. And here we go. Joined perfectly. So that's going to allow me to save money and um, make things easier on myself. The reason I'm going to save money is because I'm going to use this threaded rod inside the vase where it won't be seen. And this is just basically a threaded steel pipe. Then when we get out uh, of the inside of the vase, I'm going to use this decorative fluted rod. Now, it's not just um, economics that lead me to do this. You see the way this rod is threaded right here. It's probably about a quarter of an inch on either end that's threaded. 
And if you were to get a piece of decorative fluted rod like this and run it all the way from the bottom to the top, you would have to know in advance exactly how long your lamp was going to be from the bottom to the top because you've only got a quarter of an inch to play with. That's it. You've got to measure precisely. If you want your lamp to be half an inch shorter, too bad, because these do not come in half inch increments. Not only that, but when I put that school vase cap, and that's what's going on the top of the vase to turn it into a lamp and so the debris doesn't fall into it. When I put this on top of the vase, I'm going to want to put a nut on the underside and another nut on the top. And that means I need threads to lock into. This has threads on the ends and the ends only. As a consequence, it's just not going to do the job. The, I guess the bottom line is the only way to do this is to marry two pieces together because I need a lot of functionality from the threaded section that goes inside the lamp, but I also want a lot of good looks on the portion that goes outside the lamp. And in order to do that, just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna need two pieces because I can't have my cake and eat it too. I simply cannot have a fully threaded rod so that I can lock this vase cap in place anywhere I want it along the length of the pipe, which I can do with this pipe. Can't have it pretty like this, so I, I really have no choice but to make these little adjustments. So we'll see how it works out. I will be back in a minute after I have cut my pipe. Okay, let's take a look. I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to hold it up so it's in the camera. We've decided that this little foot is going in front here because we've got our design lined up. I did it based on lining this pattern up as the front piece. The vase cap is sitting inside the neck of the vase because it has this nice little pretty design in here and I don't want to conceal that. Now as I mentioned there is a little nut underneath the top of the vase cap that holds it in place from the bottom and all of these little pieces here are all just decorative nuts. They're all fully threaded on the inside, so they are just screwing on right over that threaded rod, right up until we come to this top one, and it goes halfway over the threaded rod, and there is then enough room for our little decorative reeded rod to just slide right in there. So now we have this and it's decorative. So the next piece we're going to install is this. And this is the piece that we got when we cannibalized the lamp for parts the other day. Now Please notice, the hole here is much too large for this. And what we're going to do to deal with that is we're going to use a reducer. Now, you, oh, and by the way, pardon the filthiness of my hands. I just looked at that. They are just gray. We use little reducers. It's the same piece, only smaller in order to turn uh, salt and pepper shakers into finials uh, and in order to uh, um, adjust a finial size. We've talked about this before when we've discussed lamp finials. 
there are two standard sizes of lamp finials, quarter inch, eighth inch. And the reducers that we use for that turn a quarter inch piece into an eighth inch piece, um, or the reverse, an eighth inch into a quarter inch. And that's what this is. This, however, is a larger reducer. I just happen to have some of those. Boy, I'm glad I did, because I need one to screw in here. And if you will recall when I was taking this apart, I mentioned that the nut, the reducer, basically was rusted on to the pipe. So that's not coming off, so we have to change that out. And as I say, we have the part, so we are doing it. And then this, get this down, is going to just screw right on top here. Let's put that in. There we go. Now, obviously we're not stopping there because how are we going to put a shade on this? We are going to take this other piece. Now, mind you, we do not have to use this. Um, I can put a shade on that piece with a nibble this big. Just stick it in and the shade will just drop down over this. But because we simply have the part, we're going to use it. And because I think I'm going to want a rather large shade on this, I'm going to put another decorative uh, reeded piece on the top. So now we have this open-ended pipe. And in order to put a shade on top of that, we have this. This is our shade rest. And this turns our quarter-inch pipe into an eighth-inch screw, which will allow us to set a shade on top and screw a finial on top. Now, this is where we are stopping for today because I'm sure we've already gone way over time. And unfortunately, I can't even tell you how much because we've done this in so many small segments. But I think this is where we're going to need to stop. And then we'll do the wiring tomorrow because I promised you a start to finish. And although, to be honest with you, it's not going to be absolutely start to finish because we won't have a shade for it. But that's going to be another project. We're going to make a shade. And this is something that a lot of you folks have been asking about. So that's going to be a project too. All right, so we're taking a break. We're going to get back together on this project and wire it. So consider this part one. And again, we're not stopping here. We're going to go right through the completed project so part two is going to be the wiring and part three is going to be the shade. All right, very quickly before we go, because this has already gotten over long, uh, we have a winner for the Dinky Love Soap. That was this beautiful bar of clean hippie soap. Smells fantastic. And the Seductive Angel Soap Dish. And that winner is Jacqueline Burl Smart. J-A-C-Q-U-L-I-N-B-U-R-R-E-L-L hyphen S-M-A-R-T. Jacqueline, get in touch so we can get your prize to you. And the rest of you, stay safe, stay well, and we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.